Somebody came up and said, hey, give me a butterfly. What's one of the first butterflies that pops in your head? Monarch butterfly. If monarchs were to disappear completely, I think that it would be really devastating. That becomes very concerning. That would be a bad day for everybody. It's just an important part of our ecosystem. It's just sad to, to see them decline. We should be doing every effort to do the right thing out on the landscape. The monarch life cycle has four different stages. There's the adult, the egg, the larva, and then the pupa. So there's two things that are really important to sustain healthy monarch populations. Um, the first is that you need to have a variety of nectar sources for the adults, and then you also need to have milkweed for the larvas, because that's the only thing that the uh, caterpillars are going to eat. If you think about all the things you eat, like a Thanksgiving meal, a lot of those things on that table is because of a pollinated plant. And one out of every three bites of food you may eat might come from a plant that was pollinated by a pollinator. Imagine the changes that would occur with that you know, complete decline of pollination. So humans have impacted monarchs negatively in a number of ways. Um, the biggest one is habitat loss, and in particular that loss of milkweed. So things like um, mowing roadsides, expanding uh, agriculture, and urban sprawl are taking away the grasslands and the fields where the milkweed typically are found. So we've been studying monarchs for about 20 years now, and in that time the population has declined by about 80 to 90%. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service um, just recently examined monarch data to determine if they were warranted for listing under the Endangered Species Act. Um, they released their findings in December of 2020, and what they came back with was that listing decision was warranted but precluded. So what that means essentially is that based on population numbers that, that monarchs should be protected under the Endangered Species Act, but there are other species that take precedence that are, that are more important at this time to protect. At the state level, we do have monarchs listed as a species of greatest conservation need. What that means is that we are investing our time and our effort into doing conservation programs um, and also trying to minimize our impacts to them. So if people want to get involved in helping conserve the monarch butterfly, some of the things they can do is purchase a wildlife legacy stamp. So that money goes to the Division of Wildlife and um, is used primarily to uh, conserve habitat for endangered species. If you have even a small backyard, you can plant your own pollinator habitat, even if it's just a small container garden. I got my start in pollinators when I was little. I think it was it was part of my mom's doing because she's a really avid gardener. Um, so we always had lots of flowers in our yard um, and that would of course bring butterflies. And so I was always out there as a little kid just running around and playing with them. A pollinator garden can be lots of things. Um, if I'm trying to target specifically pollinators in a pollinator garden, I'm gonna make sure that my seed ratio that I'm gonna have is gonna be more flowers or forbs than grasses. It's important for the nectar sources to have them available at all different seasons, so you need plants that are blooming in the spring, the summer, and the fall, and then of course you need that milkweed. Ohio has been leading the nation in converting um, state right-of-way over to the high-value pollinator plantings. In the recent years, I've kind of developed an aversion to grass, <laughs> and any time I see grass and just large expanses of it in people's yards, it, it kind of bugs me because it's like, why are you spending so much time and energy mowing that when you know you could just plant some flowers and beautify your yard? If you can not spend your time mowing the grass and focus on other things. I think um, that's a that's a win-win for both a landowner and for the, the pollinators that need those resources. You know, studies show that you enjoy your drive a lot more if you can look and see, you know, wildlife and, and flowers and um, trees and, and things versus just grass. The Department of Transportation is unique because all of our roads connect all these smaller habitats with high value pollinator plants um, that can be used for not only the monarch butterfly but also for other pollinators. So I think we can lead by example. 
As farmers, there's a lot of things we can do to help uh, improve conditions for pollinators, specifically monarchs. The CRP program that's offered through USDA is a program that landowners can participate in and receive payment for acres that are enrolled in the CRP program. Those acres then um, are focused in, in a program that categorizes them into a blend of grass species, um, perennial forages, pollinator habitats to suit the habitat and the planting of the area that you enroll those acres on. Just about any landowner can participate in the CRP program. We know that uh, the pollinators uh, play a very important role in many of the crops that we produce. We're very fortunate to have the pollinators in our landscape and we want to do everything we can to continue that. Ohio Pollinator Habitat Initiative is a grassroots organization of partners across the state. The slogan for OP High is all you can where you can. So we really like to push that. If you can do even just a little bit to help, I mean every little bit is going to help. The monarch butterfly is an ambassador species. We all remember monarchs. They're kind of like the, the polar bear of the insect world. You know, it's a very iconic butterfly. Everybody can do something to help save it. It's a male. See the spots? 